Honor the Lord with thy substance, and with the first fruits of all thine increase. The introit psalm is Psalm 111 on page 477. Psalm 111. I will give thanks unto the Lord with my whole heart in the counsel of the faithful and in the congregation. The works of the Lord are great, sought out of all them that have pleasure therein. His work is worthy to be praised and had in honor, and his righteousness endureth forever. The merciful and gracious Lord hath so done his marvelous works, that they ought to be had in remembrance. He hath given meat unto them that fear him, he shall ever be mindful of his covenant. He hath shown his people the power of his works, in giving them the heritage of the nations. The works of his hands are verity and judgment, all his precepts are sure. They stand fast forever and ever, and are done in truth and equity. He sent redemption unto his people, he hath commanded his covenant forever. Holy and reverend is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have all they that do thereafter. His praise endureth forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and it shall be, world without end. Amen. I will give thanks unto the Lord with my whole heart, in the counsel of the faithful, and in the congregation. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. <coughs> and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee, and worthily magnify thy holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, now that love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us, and write both these thy laws in our hearts, we beseech thee. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Glory be to God on high. And in earth, peace, goodwill towards men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee. We give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty. O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sin of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For Thou only art holy, Thou only art the Lord. Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Collect Epistle and Gospel for the 11th Sunday after Trinity are found beginning on page 234. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, who declarest thy almighty power most chiefly in showing mercy and pity, mercifully grant unto us such a measure of thy grace, that we, running the way of thy commandments, may obtain thy gracious promises, and be made partakers of thy heavenly treasure. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the lesson.
reading from the first book of Kings. At Gideon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night, and God said, Ask what I shall give you. And Solomon said, You have shown great and steadfast love to your servant David, my father, because he walked before you in faithfulness, in righteousness, and in uprightness of his heart towards you. And you have kept from him this great and steadfast love, and have given him a son to sit on his throne and say, And now, O Lord my God, you have made your servant king in the place of David, my father. Although I am but a little child, I do not know how to go out or come in. And your servant is in the midst of your people whom you have chosen, a great people, too many to be numbered or counted for multitudes. Give it to your servant, therefore, an understanding mind to govern your people, that I may discern between good and evil. For who is able to govern this, your great people? It pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this, and God said to him, Because you have asked this, and have not asked for yourself long life or riches or the life of your enemies, but have asked for yourself understanding to discern what is right. Behold, I now do according to your word. Behold, I give you a wise and discerning mind, so that none like you has been seen before, be seen before you, and none like you shall arise after you. I give you also what you have not asked, both riches and honor, so that no other king shall compare with you all your days. And if you will walk in my ways, keeping my statutes and my commandments, as your father David walked, then I will lengthen your days. And Solomon awoke, and behold, it was a dream. Then he came to Jerusalem and stood before the ark of the covenant of the Lord, and offered up burnt offerings and peace offerings, and made a feast for all his servants. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <coughs> the epistles written in the 15th chapter of the first epistle of St. Paul to the Corinthians in the first verse. Brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, but which also ye are saved. <coughs> ye be keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures, and that he was seen by Peter, then by the twelve, after that, he was seen by about 500 brethren at once, of whom the greater part remained unto this present, but some are fallen asleep. After that, he was seen of James, then of all the apostles, and at last of all, he was seen by me also, as of one born of due time. For I am the least of the apostles, that am not meet to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain, but I labored more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. Therefore, whether it were I or they, so we preach, and so we believe. Here ends the epistle. Page 395 for the gradual psalm. Psalm 51, verses 15 to 17. Page 395. I invite you to stand as we say this together. O Lord, open thou my lips, and my mouth shall show forth thy praise. For thou desirest no sacrifice, else would I give it, but thou delightest not in burnt offerings. The sacrifice of God is a troubled spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O God, shalt thou not despise. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. The Holy Gospel is written in the 18th chapter of the Gospel according to St. Luke, beginning at the ninth verse. Glory be to thee, O Lord. Jesus spake this parable unto certain which trusted in themselves, that they were righteous and despised others. Two men went up into the temple to pray, the one a Pharisee and the other a publican. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself, God, I thank thee that I am not as other men are, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this publican. I fast twice in the week. I give tithes of all that I possess. And the publican, standing afar off, 
would not lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven, but smote upon his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For every one that exalteth himself shall be abased, and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. The Gospel of Christ. Praise, Praise be to thee, O Christ. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of the Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, through whom all things were made who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost to the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified by the for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the Scriptures and ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world. God, be merciful to me, a sinner. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. If, perchance, you follow the morning and evening prayer lessons that are appointed in the prayer book throughout the week, you will know that we have been working our way through the story of King David this summer and have, this past week, been talking about his son, King Solomon. Solomon was David's son through Bathsheba, the wife of Uriah. Towards the end of his life, David was subjected to multiple succession crises, with his sons Absalom and Adonijah contesting the throne. Eventually, though, it was Solomon who became the new king due to a promise David had made to Bathsheba years prior. The final narratives of the life of King David have to do with the construction of the temple in Jerusalem, with King David collecting all the materials and riches to build it, but being told by God that it is not him, but his son Solomon, who is actually to complete the building. But before Solomon builds the temple, before he is to do this magnificent task, he is burdened by the way of governance and asks the Lord for the wisdom to do what is right. When the Lord appears to him in a dream and asks him what he wants, Solomon does not ask for long life or riches, but the wisdom to discern right from wrong, the wisdom to govern God's people equitably and justly. He was granted this wish, and was also granted riches and honor, because God was so pleased with his act of humility, rather than asking to boost his own status. King Solomon became well known for his great riches, beyond human knowing, but also for his wisdom in ruling, so that other rulers came from afar to hear him and to learn what he had to say. This theme of humility that we encounter with Solomon is one that permeates all three of our readings this, this evening, but none so much as the Gospel. Our Gospel lesson is a familiar one. 
the parable of the Pharisee and the publican. Jesus told this parable to some people that were listening to him, whom he perceived to be full of themselves, and looked down on others. The Pharisee stood up tall and thanked God for how great he was, and that he was not like this mere publican. Meanwhile, the publican stood afar back with his eyes cast down, not feeling worthy to be there or behold the glory of God at all, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. He, Jesus says, is the one who went home justified. For those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. Here our Lord praises the humble tax collector, for he was coming before God repentant, knowingly a sinner. He was not as, as the proud Pharisee, who merely gave thanks for how great he was. Instead, he came before God to say sorry and ask for forgiveness. Many leaders of the early church found in this parable not just a praising of humility, but a narrative against sin of pride. Pride, which they say always gets in the way of the proper worship of God. We know that Jesus told this parable to some members of his audience who trusted in themselves as just. St. Basil the Great points out that Jesus describes the Pharisee as standing up and praying with himself, not with God, for his sin of pride turned him in upon himself. St. Augustine says that given what the Pharisee says, it's clear he has no desire to better himself, and he gives no room for God's grace. These same authors remark that the Pharisee not only had to boast about his goodness, but even attacked the publican standing in the room with him. In fact, because the publican was there, the Pharisee felt even better about himself and his status. St. John Chrysostom writes, We do not give thanks by speaking ill of others. When you give thanks to God, let him alone be your thought. Do not let your mind turn to men, and do not condemn your neighbor. He who speaks ill of others does great harm to himself and to others. And St. Augustine said, examining the Pharisee's words, you find he asks nothing of God. He came to pray, but he has no wish to ask God for anything. He wishes simply to praise himself and insult the other man praying there. The Pharisee, in his boasting, hurts himself, the publican, and his own relationship with God. What a terrible irony that is, that one of the most religious of the Jews here is doing the most to damage his relationship with the Almighty. But God loves even more those who acknowledge their faults, those who come before him with humility to repent and repair their relationship with him. This parable is really one about the dangers of pride, but also the virtues of humility, honesty, and repentance. Something we hear quite often, more and more about, are members of our society, even members of our own families, saying they believe in God, but do not want to be associated with organized religion. Have you ever stopped to think about why that might be? For some, sure, they do not like the formality of church services. Or perhaps they were embarrassed when they were younger by being called up to the front to say or sing something. But for many, the reality is that nobody in their peer group goes to church, so they have no comrades there. And another group entirely chooses to disassociate with organized religion because they have had a bad experience. Perhaps they met somebody, like the Pharisee from today's Gospel, who in raising themselves up, took somebody else down. Does somebody you know come to mind when you hear about the Pharisee in today's parable? I would wager we all have somebody in our lives who might act that way. In fact, it can sometimes be all too easy to be 
precisely that person ourselves. We are all proud of ourselves at times, and that's normal, but we cannot let that pride take over and supplant, supplant God. It's a slippery slope. In all our moments of pride, we must thank God for the blessings he has given us and pray that he continues to guide us on our journey. Because, as St. Augustine says, we must always leave room to ask God to continue to better us. We must come to God thankful for his blessings, but still repenting of our many shortcomings. We are human. We will always make mistakes, and we will continue to arrogantly think of ourselves as better than others. We are always susceptible to mortal sin, but we must bring our shortcomings to God so that he might redeem us for their weight. For our God is a God of forgiveness, love, and mercy. The primary focus of our lives, our goal, should be to please God in all we do, to think about our relationship with him and keep that in perspective as we deal with each other. We should want our family, our friends, and our neighbors to share in that same relationship. And all of our choices should be informed from that relationship. This is what King Solomon models for us in our Old Testament lesson. He models not only humility, but he is rewarded for wanting the wisdom to bring his people to a loving relationship with God. And he is certainly granted this in abundance. But Solomon's tale is also simultaneously a word of caution and of reassurance. Sure, he was granted this gift of God, but his later choices to abandon God in favor of idols caused him to lose his entire kingdom and all that he gained. This is the caution. The reassurance, though, is that unlike Solomon's many heirs, we now have, through Jesus, or we now through Jesus, can stray and come back, and stray and come back as number, sorry, stray and come back to God innumerable times, as long as we repent for our misdeeds. Despite the apostasy and abandonment of Solomon, his sons and many generations that followed him, the royal line of David, his father, is redeemed through Jesus. Now God will welcome back his prodigal sons and daughters with open arms and with the fattened calf and a great feast. What is important is that we turn to him in humility and repentance, that we open ourselves to accept his influence in our lives. Offer to God the praise that he is owed and welcome him in to change your heart. For everyone that exalteth himself shall be abased. And he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. And now unto God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, be ascribed all might, majesty, dominion, power, honor, and glory, as is most justly due, henceforth and forevermore. Amen. Give unto the Lord the honor due unto his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts.
Blessed be thou, Lord God of Israel, forever and ever. All that is in the heaven and in the earth is thine. All things come of thee, and of thine own have we given thee. We offer this holy Eucharist to the praise and glory of Almighty God, and in thanksgiving for his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who has redeemed us in our humility. Let us pray for all, all of God's people, saying, Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. For grace to follow the example of the Blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints, that we may share with them in the joy of the kingdom of God. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. For this parish and diocese, for all bishops, priests, and deacons, especially David, our bishop, and Paul, our missionary at Bishop McAllister College in Uganda, for Bishop Matthias and the clergy and people of our companion diocese, the Diocese of Po in Ghana, for our sisters and brothers in the parish of Marysville and the parish of Stanley, and for all our efforts to work together as the body of Christ to bring light to the dark places of this world. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. For the Anglican community, for our fellow Christians everywhere, that we might grow into that peace and unity for which our Lord prayed. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. For Charles, our King, for all heads of state and government, for our Prime Minister, Premier, and all elected representatives, for those who hold positions of public trust and responsibility, that they may serve justice and promote the dignity and freedom of all people. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. For grace to persevere in building lives, ordered in justice and unity, that preserved from dishonesty and selfishness, we may overcome injustice and hatred. For the First Nations, Inuit, and Métis peoples of Canada, for all those who struggle every day for healing and reconciliation, for those who cope with the effects of systemic racism and abuse, for all those whose lives and livelihoods are threatened and endangered by the climate change crisis, and for a collective will to use all our natural resources carefully and responsibly. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. For a sense of truthfulness and clear thinking, that putting away all violence, we may share in the efforts to bring lasting peace to the world, especially in Syria, Iraq, Afghanistan, Ukraine, and Niger. For all members of the Canadian Armed Forces, as they serve at home and away, to bring peace and safety to troubled regions. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. For a new awareness of God's love, that we might bring an end to the evil of racial and ethnic prejudice. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. For all who are diseased in body and mind, for the hungry and homeless, and for the sick, especially Allison, Andrea, Andrew, Betty, Blaine, Bob, Bonnie, Brent, Brian, Cameron, Catherine, Charles, Christopher, Cody, Colin, Darren, Daryl, David, Dayton, Doe, Donna, Doreen, Dorothy, Dwight, Ed, Elaine, Eva, Gail, Jill, Gordon, Gunner, Gwen, Hannah, Hans, Jack, Janice, Jason, Jessica, Joan, Joanne, Jody, Kathy, Kelly, Leanne, Leola, Linda, Lucy, Maggie, Marissa, Marlene, Martin, May, Michael, Nellie, Neville, Pat, Paulette, Philip, Richard, Rita, Rob, Roger, Ron, Roy, Ruth, Salome, Sandra, Shelley, Tammy, Terry, Timothy, Tina, Wayne, Wendell, William, Xavier, and Zoe. And for those who are responsible for their care, Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. For those who are lonely, or fearful, or sorrowful, for those who face temptation, doubt, and despair, for all those who suffer from natural disaster, especially fires and floods, for prisoners and those suffering the enslavement of addiction, and for all those who are in need of God's grace in other ways, especially Vanda, Ethel, Lorraine, Lois, Mary, Sam, Mabel, Marilyn, Anne, Sheila, and Linda, Donna, Kay, Inez, Helen, Brian, Liz, Mackenzie, Kathy, Dorothy, Scarlett, Paul, Reg and Barb, Irene, Scott and family, Aaron and the Brooks family, the Lorenz family, and those working in long-term care facilities. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. We remember with thanksgiving those who have departed this life and are now at rest 
especially George Hino, Daryl Hazlitt, Richard Sprague, Jean Jarvis, and Arthur Gray. Rest eternal grant unto them, O Lord, and let thy perpetual shine upon them. May they rest in peace. Amen. Grant these our prayers, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. You that do truly and earnestly repent for your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbors, and intend to lead the new life following the commandments of God, and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament of your comfort, and make your humble confession to Almighty God, meekly kneeling upon your knees. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed, by thought, word, and deed, against thy divine majesty. We do earnestly repent, and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of thy life, to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all them that with heart and repentance and through faith turn unto him, have mercy upon us. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Savior Christ saith unto all that truly turn to him. Come unto me, all that labor and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Hear also what St. Paul said, This is a true saying, and worthy of all to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear also what St. John said, If anyone sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. The Lord be with you. And with your heart, Lift up your hearts. Lift up your heart unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. Amen. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God, creator and preserver of all things. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy. Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord most high. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessing and glory and thanksgiving be unto thee, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father. Who of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to take our nature upon him, and to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption? Who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and an institute, and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memorial of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee, and grant that we, receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body, and blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, 
he brings it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. servants with all thy holy church, remembering the precious death of thy beloved Son, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming again in glory, do make before thee, in this sacrament of the holy branch of eternal life, and the cup of everlasting salvation, the memorial which he hath commanded. And we entirely desire thy fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And we pray that by the power of thy Holy Spirit, all we who are partakers of this holy communion may be fulfilled with thy grace and heavenly benediction. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. And now, as our Savior Christ hath commanded and taught us, we are bold to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Lord be always with you. And with thy spirit. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. 
feed on him in thy heart by faith with thanksgiving. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which is given for thee, preserve thy body and soul unto Amen. everlasting life. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which is given for thee, preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. Take and eat this in remembrance that Christ died for thee. Feed on him in thy heart by faith with thanksgiving. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which is given for thee, preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which is given for thee, preserve thy body and soul and to everlasting life. Take and eat this in remembrance that Christ died for thee. Feed on him in thy heart by faith with thanksgiving. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which is given for thee, preserve thy body and soul and to everlasting life. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which is given for thee, preserve thy body and soul and to everlasting life. Christ, which is given for thee, preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which is given for thee, preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank thee that thou dost graciously feed us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, assuring us thereby of thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are living members of this mystical body, which is the blessed company of all faithful people and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls, and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee. And although we are unworthy, yet we beseech thee to accept this, our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost, 
be all the honor and glory for us with that gift. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us go forth in peace. In the name of